Hello and welcome to a CBK gaming video. Join us as we discuss and review Earth Rising by Stop, Drop and Roll Studios. So, before we get into the review and the discussion around this game, it's important for us to point out that this is a prototype for a game that's going to be on Kickstarter in the next few months. We had the opportunity to meet with Stop, Drop and Roll and Laurie showed us how to play this game and we just about managed to win the first time we played it. And it was a great opportunity to find out a little bit more about the game, the inspiration behind the game. And they left us with this prototype copy so that we could play it. And, and boy, have we played it. We've played it a lot of times. I think we've, we're in excess of 10 times playing it since we've received it, so that we could bring you an honest review of what we think of the game, the mechanics. However, the components, we can't comment on these are prototype uh, prototype um, components. They're not going to be the same that you're going to see in the Kickstarter variant. That said, it's still very good quality, but there are some little changes and I'll just take you through some of those changes. One, the board is going to be different. The board is going to be circular, not a square board. Um, we think that's a really fantastic um, idea. It gives it a slight difference to other games out there. The box itself. This one's quite important to many of us because currently this box size doesn't sit in um, a, a Kallax or our um, homemade uh, shelving. This is going to be changed and it will be the normal size for a board game and actually reducing the, the footprint overall on the table for the board game as well. The details will be in the new Kickstarter um, around those those changes. There's there are also maybe some cosmetic changes to some of the cards that we've got, some of the wording, but overall the mechanics, the way everything works is exactly the same. So, what is Earth Rising? Well, Earth Rising is a one to six player cooperative board game where you take on the role of either an activist, an ecologist, grass, grassroots politician, an innovator, an eco-investor, trying to build a more sustainable planet. You have 20 rounds or 20 years in which to achieve this. There are going to be setbacks and boy are there setbacks. They are these horrendous cards, they're the status quo cards. So as we are making the world better, as we are introducing more and more sustainable um, processes, you have the individuals that want to stay as they were, that are scared of change, don't see the ben benefit of that change, and those are represented by these status quo cards. And they undo a lot of the good work that you do, <laughs> They make things much worse and you have to fight to undo what has happened or what has occurred. Um, they can be mitigated initially, so you will only ever see three of these cards on the first turn through the cards. And you know that they are placed within a certain group of cards towards the end of the deck. So you have some idea that you, you've got a little bit of, a, of headroom to be able to make choices, make decisions before you start hitting those status quo cards. There's strain. So as you're going around the board, as you can see, there are sections which you need to pull in and create a circular world inside the uh, board. These sections, get strain put on them and unsustainable processes add strain to the board. Population in poverty adds strain to the board. 
you have to juggle reducing that strain, reducing that population in poverty and implementing sustainable processes. And not only that, you have to bring new, uh, you, you, ha you have to bring these parts of the board into the central part. Now that's free, so if you, for example, are playing the climatologist, um, which happens to be the energy um, part of the board, for you to move this section down, if there is no strain on the top of your um, boards, you can bring this down for free. If, however, you are playing the climatologist and you want to bring down agriculture's board, you would need to spend one of these cards. So the cards, everybody starts with two. There are cards relating to all the sustainable and unsustainable processes in the game. They all relate to either energy, industry, agriculture, infrastructure, culture and politics. They are beautifully realised, they're really good artwork. The colours, this is where we, we have a little bit of a problem, which was between the yellow and the orange. They are um, very similar and we found ourselves taking the wrong tokens or looking and you had to look twice. Yeah. So that's one thing that um, we did notice is the colour variance between orange and yellow was even for people that aren't colorblind, we found that very difficult at times, depending on the light we were playing it. Yeah. Um, you have a maximum hand size of five and you pick up two cards each turn. As you play, you play those cards. So you can have, if you are playing, as we said, the climatologist and you have the solar generation and coal industry, the opposite, you can place, if it's not already on the board, the sustainable process, so the solar generation, and you would place a new token on that. If, however, the coal industry was on the board, you could use this card to remove the coal industry. So you're removing an unsustainable process from the board. If, however, you are not the clim climatologist, you need to spend two cards to do anything, whether that's to add or remove a sustainable or an unsustainable process. Um, so as long as one of those relates to what you want to remove or what you want to add, then you can do that, but it costs that extra card. Um, However, when removing an unsustainable industry, you've got to be careful because all the people that work there are now going to be unemployed, unless you've already thought ahead and you've placed the sustainable ones instead. So that's where the juggling balancing yes. act comes in and it's really well thought out that way. It is. You can't just change an industry because people are gonna yeah. suffer. And so you've got to consider that before you place your cards. So yeah, that, that's dealt with through this poverty um, middle part of the board where you have the population in poverty, which we'll come back to in just a minute. Um, so that's how you place the boards, that's how you use the cards, but each character has their own ability. So the activist has these purple, uh, purple tokens, which they can place on unsustainable um, processes. Depends how many, the number they can place depends on how many sustainable processes they have in their part of the board. But if you put this against an unsustainable process, so let's take, for example, uh, centralized distribution as an unsustainable practice. The activist can put this activist token next to it. And if you happen to have the centralized distribution card and you were the climatologist or you had two energy cards and you were in the uh, rest of the team you would be able to play that and instead of removing this token you would flip it and you would flip it to its sustainable practice which is to decentralize uh, decentralized networks and that 
makes things much easier. Being able to turn tokens over rather than remove them and add new ones really makes a difference. The agriculture, um, so the, I forgot who it is, the ecologist. ecologist is able to add green tokens which represent um, enhanced um, sustainable practices and you will see on the screen now a number of these cards and these the tokens that they can play are these regeneration tokens now you add these green tokens to any sustainable practice and it's even better at removing some of the strain on your particular part of the board and that's very important because if you cannot manage the strain it will overwhelm you and you will end up with a climate crisis and that nobody wants to see and will actually make the game much much harder there are other benefits to some of these characters the innovator um, in industry has these yellow tokens which are the startup tokens which you can now see on on the screen the innovator um, and he gets to place these into the population in poverty that allows startups to support some of the population or the though population that is in poverty let's return to this group of meeples in the center so for every three meeple you have in the center and you start with 18 you place one strain on the boards at the end of a character's turn so that doesn't take into consideration the strain that gets added or removed by your sustainable and unsustainable processes you have to manage the poverty in the po population in poverty alongside the processes that you are putting on the board and that I really like as part of this game because it, it's a juggling act and you can actually see you have to think sometimes maintaining an unsustainable process will allow you to keep people out of poverty whilst you address in other areas parts that you need to make more sustainable much like real life yeah it's a fine tuned balancing act and this game is very much a balancing act it can easily run away with you the first time we played this game we did not take care of the strain and ended up with um, an earthquake doing considerable damage to one of our locations and it, it actually quite upset us we, we didn't yeah. want to lose we didn't want to lose the game we didn't want to see the um, <laughs> the, the um, destructive elements on the board either subsequently we played this game and I think we've won every single time different yeah. ways different characters we've played this as with six players two players we thought initially that it was going to be easier with six players because you'd always have the ability to bring down the boards which is how you win to bring down the two pieces of the board um, if there is no strain to then put the two pieces of the board in and build the circle of the the, the board but actually it wasn't um it might have been easier to do that but you get through the cards quicker you mm -hmm. you have other problems i was i was worried about the balance of the game once you got the more players because your individual characters their abilities are really powerful when mm -hmm. you think about what they can actually do and <laughs> i thought well when you've got all six of them working together you're going to win this in a couple of rounds it's going to be so easy but it really isn't because then you realize that although the ecologist goes and sort of gets to put a couple of tokens down that's it they can't move those tokens for another five rounds until everyone else yeah. has gone so yes they've had that round has been very powerful 
but that's as far as they've reached. They can't then do it again until it comes back round to them. Whereas two player playing just the ecologist and someone else, the ecologist every other go, they're moving the tokens round to where they're needed. But then you haven't got the abilities of the other players helping. And so it's really well balanced out between how many players there are in the game. Mm -hmm. There are going to be some solo rules. Um, we're going to look at those um, when Laurie provides them. And we will do a small review of the single player um, rule set. There was also some discussion and a very interesting discussion around um, the randomness and changing of the roles um, yeah. within the game. That sounded really interesting. So we'll be intrigued to see how that progresses um the cards so the, the the turns are governed by these cards which have the years on and go through the years obviously currently starting at 2021 um but because the game will be delivered in 2022 um that will the, the years will start with 2022 however they are made so that you can write your own years on the back so if you want to continue forward and just increment the numbers of the years you can do so which is which is a really it good adds idea a huge longevity to the game yes yeah yeah um overall i really enjoyed the mechanics of this game as a game it is good fun as a gateway game now originally when i played this i didn't see it as a gateway game it was it, it felt a bit too complex for a gateway game but There's as we played it spinning yes there. um but as we played it actually this is a gateway game it's a gateway game into cooperative games in the vein of well, the style of spirit island and that's what i really like about this this game will lead you into a really interesting world but not only that there is there is so much passion and so much energy in that team and they really have done a lot of research about climate change about um, sustainable practices against unsustainable practices all of this is going to be reflected in the books uh, in the in the rule book in the details in the game and sitting and talking to laurie it, it's his passion and um his love of the subject he's really catching and yeah. it, it's great to see we have a love of not only board games but we also like to look at sustainable practices and, and what we can do now the board game hobby is full of plastic miniatures and all sorts now yes that's going to be the case but there are games where you don't need that and sometimes you see miniatures in games where they don't need miniatures what stop drop and roll have done made their game completely biodegradable which is a great start yeah and they've looked at the footprint the carbon footprint that comes with building the game from beginning all the way through to delivery and i i, I really really do think that's admirable admirable and i can't wait to see this on kickstarter yeah and for me it's not just a board game it's become a talking point because some of the sustainable industries that you place I hadn't heard of so I've gone and looked them up or I've heard of them but not realized how close we are to actually being able to implement them mm -hmm. in the world now and so we've been talking about that and how can we help what can we do to change things and there are some that I went oh I like placing this card because this relates mm -hmm. to one of my hobbies and then realized that I myself am on, on, I'm not doing the best that I could for the planet with this hobby. And now I've seen how to change what I do. And it's wonderful. It was things like um, textiles. And I didn't realize that I was just picking up fabric. And now it shows, this game has shown me what types of fabric are actually better for the environment. And it's little bits like that, that you'll find touch other parts of your life that you realize mm -hmm. you can then start making a change. But, that's going to be better for the planet. And it's wonderful that a board game gets you talking and thinking after you've finished the enjoyment of playing it. Yeah, absolutely. And 
you may disagree with some of the, the parts on, on the board, but if it generates that discussion, if it generates you learning something new, there are things, when, when Laurie was here and, and I, I challenged a few things because I didn't know and I had my own set of assumptions and actually he was able to, to um, give me factual information and, and that was awesome and the fact that, that all that passion and knowledge and interest has been built into a game yeah. and the subject matter is fascinating but the game mechanics are great as well there's a lot of games out there with really interesting subject matter but they're, they're bland or boring games this is not one of them it's going to be coming on Kickstarter very soon. Um, I can't remember the exact dates. Um, I, I think it's going to be in August. I think it's, it's, it's um, mid to late August. Watch our channel. We will be giving some details out on our Facebook channel, on Twitter and Instagram our Instagram. And Facebook, yeah. Um, we are very grateful to have, to have had the opportunity to look at the prototype of this game we will be backing it oh, yeah. we will also be backing it and um, you have the opportunity of gifting a game to a school a library or um, a hobby a club and i think what we will be doing is gifting um, a couple of copies to a local school um, and a school um, that deb's our friend works at as well um, where children are learning through board games so gamification um, which is which is a fantastic uh, opportunity as well um, there's some really interesting unlocks as well um, that Laurie was mentioning so this currently the strain um, tokens are card um, the one of the top tier unlocks I think uh, stretch goals are glass uh, which I think is really good. I I'd like really like things. to see that. So please back this yeah, game yeah. just so that that gets let's, unlocked. Let's reach that <laughs> um, that that uh, stretch goal. But there were some others about different meeples and things like that. So if you ask us, <clears throat> should you back this game? Yes, it's it's a fantastic game. The mechanics are good fun. If you're looking for a cooperative game, then. And, and that's not a miniature driven game and it's just something slightly different which looks different on the table and has real social purpose behind it this is a great game to get yeah um and the team are passionate about their games there's going to be more games coming this is a studio to to watch out for i think they're, they're going to start producing some really interesting and fun games i can't yeah. wait to see what they do <laughs> um but thank you for watching we really appreciate it if you do decide to 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 back um earth rising please let us know in the comments we'd really like to hear from you it'd be really nice for us to be able to say to laurie and and his team that us having a look at this prototype, bringing this video to you has enabled us to reach out and let people know about it and get you to back the game. If you are intrigued and interested in, in anything here, please reach out to us um, and we can um, get some information and some answers to you. If you have enjoyed watching this, please like and subscribe. It means a lot to us and we can start to build that community. Um, and. We look forward to bringing you yet more games and more reviews. I think we've got another exciting one um, that we're, we're talking to um, a board game designer around at the moment, um, which is again I, another cooperative game uh, set in World War II. And I'm really intrigued and really looking forward to that as well. So hopefully we'll be bringing you further prototypes and we'll be able to give you an idea of what's coming to Kickstarter in the near future. So thank you very much. Bye. Thank you.